They actually walk the walk. They got the respect of their community. They got the respect of the people they work with. Um, they've really done the things that they're talking about. And what I find is people who have really walked in those valleys and, 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 and really, you, you know, have had boots on the fucking ground of that shit, they go into life with empathy. They go into life like understanding folks on the quote unquote other side. You know, look, man, I, I, I mean, we talk about policing with this new show. Um, look, man, I'm sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure sometime in your life you've been beaten up by a cop. I sure as fuck have been beaten up by a cop. And 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 look, that being said, some of my best friends in the world are cops. Are cops. I don't fucking hate. I've also experienced unbelievable, sublime generosity and kindness from cops when Me I've too. been I've been Me protected too. by cops. Me too. And like the fact is, in this country, you know, for some reason now we've confused. You know, being completely fucking steadfast in your views, completely unchanging. It's my way or the highway as being patriotic or strong or tough, where to me, there's nothing more cowardly. There's nothing more un-American than saying it's my way or the highway. This country is about fucking sitting down with people that might think differently than you and having a fucking beer and being like, hey, man, you might teach me something. I might teach you something. We still love our kids. We still love our sports. We still love, and we can go to we, And you know what, man? Like push comes to shove. We will fight together as Americans to preserve this country. It's the greatest country on fucking earth. And I think we've become so divided you know, I, I, I'll tell you, you, you know, one of the things on, my, on the show that I'm, I'm most excited about is um, in, a, in a few cases and folks in Shreveport, folks in South Central Los Angeles and D.C. and Baltimore, I've had guys come on who are either active or ex-gang members who have done, you know, you know, decades in prison, some of them. Some of them did life sentence. One guy that I had got out of Supermax in Florence, Colorado, was locked up with Larry Hoover. And I had them on literally with, sometimes with the cop that put him away. And what I found is like, here are two people on, on opposing sides, quote unquote, of this sort of argument about race and policing in this country, but yet they're finishing each other's sentences. They're more alike than they are different. They both lost time. They both lost friends. They both lost loved ones to this, you know, war on drugs or whatever this is, yet they find fault with their own groups. They find they can reach across the quote unquote fucking aisle and say, hey, here's a here's a cop that I really fucking respected. Or you know what? Here's a gang member I really respected. I really respected the way he was there, his loyalty that he showed, how he protected people in his community. And 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 to me, it's like if these folks can do that, we all should be able to do that. And so again, without wanting the hardest thing for me about doing the show is that it's 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 I'm asking a lot of people that aren't used to coming on camera, aren't used to coming on the mic, people that I really fucking love and respect and who have opened up their lives to me, which I think is sacred. And I'm asking them to open up their lives to, you know, whatever platform I have. But I, I, I genuinely fucking believe that those are the people that we should be listening to. I love the people we have on. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm not an interviewer. I'm not like good at this. I'm not, but it is not about celebrities. It's not about fucking acting. It's not about, it's literally about discourse and spending some time with people who, again, who walk the walk. They don't just talk about it. It's crazy how one of the biggest problems I have taking pictures with people yeah. is, do you know who you're taking a picture with? I stole a chain, a can of chains that belonged to handicapped kids one time. I took it. Wait, you stole? I went to get ice cream. Yeah. But if I, I went to like get ice cream to a milkshake, and I had like eighteen dollars, I needed twenty to go into the city to get a bag of reefer. Yeah. And that's not even taking the bus. I'm walking over the George Washington right, Bridge. Right, right, right. What I'm trying to say is a real point there that in life, one time I went to get something, and there was a mug, a can, where you put your change, and there was a couple dollars. I took the can. Mm. Just took the can mm. in 1993. Why? Because I'm a fucking thief. Yeah. You know, I went to prison. I did all these mistakes. I always want to celebrate. The, like, I always go, why would you want to take a picture of me? There's a doctor somewhere That's that right. saved the kid's life. That's today. right. And you want to take a picture with a fella. That's right. Because he That's cracked right. a few jokes. Because right. you, because I smoked dope. Are you fucking retarded? What is wrong with you? That's right. Go take a picture with a cop that yeah. just gave birth to a kid in a fucking fire. Like, That's he, right. he just saved a woman and the, the baby was yeah. fucking, you know, those are the people that we should celebrate. We don't celebrate them. In America. We don't only celebrate them. The man like, of the day, we, celebrate them. That's em. it. And, and then we want to, like, talk about all these issues. We want to, you know, we want to talk about all these issues, but the only way we can talk about them is by saying you're either on this side or that side. And with the folks that are actually living it, they don't pick sides. They're busy doing it. They're you know what I mean? It, yeah. They're busy doing it. And they see beauty and they see 
brutality in in the life that they're living and they call it out they judge people for the content of their character and the fucking look in their eye it's not because hey you're on this team or you're on that team and and you you know I look man I think for me it kind of you know during the pandemic and 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 when the sort of the, the in the height of, of of the reaction to both George Floyd the the George Floyd video and then you know D- during during you know the verdict you know one thing that i was really seeing is i was like look man like i want to be out there i believe in this mo- movement you know i believe that you know what that guy did you know i didn't need to be there seeing that video that 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 was just a a, a level of disgusting horrifying violence that i knew that that needed to be weeded out and i knew that there was something in the culture of policing that needed to change with that it was it was i needed be, to be a part of that movement i needed to be out on the streets i needed to be a part of that protest but then i also saw on tv people throwing fucking bottles at cops People fucking hurling insults at cops. And each one of those cops has a family. They've got wives or husbands or kids or brothers and sisters. They're all human beings trying to do the best they can. And this is one guy. So anytime I'd go out to the protests, I'd go down to Newton Division and I'd go talk to the cops too. And I just didn't understand why you couldn't be both. Why can't you be Black Lives Matters and pro Pro, pro police why can't you do that and and what was crazy is the folks who are actually from these communities you know everyone's saying defund the police let's say the people who are from these communities you go talk to the folks in, in in shreveport louisiana where the murder rate is just fucking skyrocketing i'm talking to people in some of the you know most ignored communities in that fucking city they say we need more policing you go to baltimore we need more fucking policing in baltimore there, there's been so much police corruption but i talked to my buddy tony maggio or keith galliano guys who who grew up in fucking East Baltimore, who are policing for the right reasons, and are community mind, they got the respect of their community. They're fucking aggressive ass, serious cops, and the community fucking loves them, and they love the community. They're doing it for the right reasons. It's just, it's so much more complicated than anyone wants to make this shit. All these issues, you know, it's like when I, you know, talking to my friend, you know, in Moscow, we had on the on the, on the podcast the other day to talk about what what information is really like over there and what people are really hearing on on the ground in Moscow. It, it sucks because, you know, right now, so much of the information is so fucking agenda driven. And again, like, Joe, you know me. I'm a fucking asshole who says lines for a living that somebody else wrote. I put makeup on like I research the shit out of my shit, but I am not the guy to be delivering political discourse to this guy. Like, I, I is no, not about neither. But these fucking people, I know for a fact we need to start listening to people who actually do this shit who actually have seen it. You want to talk about war? You want to talk about combat? Talk to special forces soldiers. Talk to Marines. Talk to guys who have actually been there. Talk about what they've seen. Like, let them open up about their experiences. Don't listen to some motherfucker who's just pontificating about books and he's never set foot there. I just, I know in my gut that that's the answer. I know that's the answer for our kids. I know we got it. Those are the people that, that, that need the mic right now. So that's, that's what we're trying to do with the show. It's a great fucking show. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.